It is Friday, August 7. Welcome to CGN News. The United Kingdom will be accelerating access to COVID-19 vaccines in the Caribbean in an attempt to help the region fight the virus. Dominic Raab and Marcelo Ebrard, foreign secretaries of the UK and Mexico, say that ensuring equitable access to vaccines in the Caribbean and Latin America is the only solution to ending the COVID-19 pandemic. The two were speaking during a joint virtual seminar under the theme, quote, accelerating access to COVID-19 vaccines in Latin America and the Caribbean, end quote. They were joined by senior policymakers and scientists from across the region. The chairman of the 15-member regional integration movement, CARICOM, on Wednesday, defended his decision to, quote, interfere in the political situation in Guyana, CMC reports. Dr. Ralph Gonzalez told listeners to his weekly radio program that his intervention was important to maintaining democracy in the CARICOM country. Gonzalez, who is also the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, said that soon after President Ifran Ali had been sworn into office on Sunday, he telephoned him to congratulate him on his victory. Ali, 40, was sworn into office a few hours after the Guyana Elections Commission's had declared him the winner of the presidential elections and also gave the People's Progressive Party victory over the ruling coalition. Barbados has kicked Jamaica and a number of other islands out of its drastically reduced travel bubble in a bid to control the spread of the coronavirus. However, Edmund Bartlett, Jamaica's tourism minister in responding, said Jamaica is keeping Barbados and other Caribbean countries within its travel bubble despite a resurgence of the COVID-19 on some islands. Bartlett, commenting on the exclusion in an interview with Loop Caribbean, said he has no idea what the prerequisites are for being in that bubble. He hailed Barbados as a partner and said that all the islands are managing the pandemic with varying levels of success. Belize Prime Minister Dean Barrow announced at a press conference on Wednesday that due to a spike in the number of COVID-19 cases, there would be a delay in the reopening of the Philip Goldson International Airport. Education Minister Patrick Faber also confirmed that the reopening of the schools will be delayed. He said the ministry would continue to monitor the situation as it relates to COVID-19 and will be making adjustments as deemed necessary. The reopening of both the airport and schools will be announced at a later date. Already smashing records this year's hyperactive Atlantic hurricane season is about to get even nastier, forecasters predict. In the coming months, they expect to run out of traditional hurricane names and see about twice as much storm activity as a normal year, the Associated Press reports. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the NOAA, on Thursday, upped its seasonal forecast. The NOAA is now predicting a far above average 19 to 25 named storms 7 to 11 of them to become hurricanes, and 3 to 6 of those to become major hurricanes with winds of at least 111 miles per hour or 178 kilometers per hour. That's a few more storms than the agency's May forecast. The agency also increased the chance of an above-average hurricane season from 60% to 85%. Overseas now, protesters clashed with Lebanese security forces at anti-government demonstrations in Beirut on Thursday. According to BBC reports, officers deployed tear gas on dozens of people near Parliament. Demonstrators were angered by Tuesday's devastating blast, which officials say was caused by 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate stored unsafely since 2013. Many in Lebanon say government negligence led to the explosion, which killed at least 137 people and injured about 5,000 others. The explosion destroyed entire districts in the capital, with homes and businesses reduced to rubble. Dozens of people are still unaccounted for. The Attorney General of New York took action Thursday to dissolve the National Rifle Association, the NRA, following an 18-month investigation that found evidence the powerful gun rights group is, quote, fraught with fraud and abuse. Attorney General Letitia James claims in a lawsuit filed Thursday that she found financial misconduct in the millions of dollars and that it contributed to a loss of more than $64 million over a three-year period. 
The suit alleges that top NRA executives misused charitable funds for personal gain, awarded contracts to friends and family members, and provided contracts to former employees to ensure loyalty. Seeking to dissolve the NRA is the most aggressive sanction James could have sought against the not-for-profit organization, which she has jurisdiction over because it is registered in New York. The NRA said in a statement that the legal action was political, calling it a baseless, premeditated attack on the organization. On Wednesday, both Facebook and Twitter removed a video that U.S. President Donald Trump shared on his Facebook page and Twitter account. The social media sites claimed that the video contained false information about the coronavirus. The video was a clip of a phone interview Trump did with Fox News on Wednesday morning in which he pushed for schools to reopen for in-person learning and falsely claimed children are, quote, almost immune to the virus. A spokesperson for Twitter said the video is in violation of the rules on COVID misinformation. They also added that at Team Trump, the official Twitter account for Trump's campaign would not be able to tweet again until they delete the tweet with the video. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has been accused of sending a hit squad to Canada in order to kill a former Saudi intelligence official. The failed plan to kill Saad al-Jabri was soon after the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi in Turkey, court documents filed in the U.S. allege. Mr. Jabri, a veteran of the government of Saudi Arabia, fled into exile three years ago. He has been under private security protection in Toronto since. The alleged plot failed after Canadian border agents became suspicious of the hit squad as they attempted to enter the country at Toronto's Pearson International Airport, court documents say. Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association President Dr. Warren Blake hailed Olympians Merlene Otte and Dion Hemmings McCarthy as pioneers of local athletics after they were announced among the sporting figures to receive national awards later this year. Otte, 60 years old, will receive the Order of Jamaica, the country's fourth highest honor, on Heroes Day in October, while Hemmings McCarthy will be awarded the Order of Distinction Commander Class. Otte had previously received the Order of Distinction Officer Class. Blake told the Gleaner in an interview that both athletes had paved the way for the excellence that Jamaica currently enjoys in the sport. Otte became the first woman from the English-speaking Caribbean to win an Olympic medal at the 1980 Moscow Games, earning bronze in the 200-meter final. That's it for CGN News. I'm Scott Wilson. Thanks for watching.